Hey guys, so today we're gonna to take a look at the beta for the Apple Watch's second operating system and first big update, it's watchOS 2. So this is the fourth and I believe final beta for watchOS 2, so it should be fully featured and there's a lot of great stuff in here. First off, I'm very happy to say that apps will now run natively on the Apple Watch. This is something that was really taking a lot of the fun out of it for me because apps would take so long to load on the watch itself that I, I would end up just taking out my phone for a lot of things. But now with this update, that doesn't seem to be an issue anymore. Apps are loading very quickly, at least with the native Apple apps. So, so that's great and it really reaffirms my confidence in the product. Also, Apple has said that this native hosting will enable apps to use video content which, which is great for apps like Instagram and Vine, which until now would just redirect you to your phone for any video content. My next favorite new feature has got to be the new complications. Now, if you don't know, complications are the little modules that you can put on your watch face that give you different kinds of information. And with this new update, you can customize those complication with data from third-party apps. Now this isn't up and running in the beta, partially because it doesn't have updated third-party apps, but I think this could be something that could be really cool. Apple showed an example that had things like flight information, sports team scores, um, and even the battery charge of your car. I like the idea of having all of that information just a glance away, and um, I can't wait to try that out for myself. Another new feature is something Apple is calling time travel. Now, what this lets you do is use the digital crown to scroll into the future or the past, and your complications on your home screen will change accordingly. For instance, if you scroll into the future, your calendar complication uh, would, would show what meetings or appointments you have scheduled later in the day. Now the Maps application has been updated to give you transit information and while that's really an iOS 9 update, it's worth mentioning because it's been so long coming and if you live in a city or a place where you need to use public transportation, you know that you got to use a third party app um, like Google Maps to, to get around on, on the trains or the buses. Also with this update, Apple is giving third party apps access to features of the watch like the Taptic Engine, the speaker and microphone, the accelerometer, and even the heart rate sensor. And that's great because it's gonna mean developers have more freedom and they're gonna be able to create better apps. With the new update, you can now reply to emails via dictation directly from the watch itself. I think this is great because I think the dictation feature works really well. I use it for text all the time. And also, I think the main reason I, I really take my phone out these days is to send emails. Also, Apple Pay is now letting you store different kinds of cards, including rewards cards and store credit cards. I think this is great. Uh, the fewer cards I have to carry around in my wallet, the better. Now the one update that everyone seems to be going crazy for is the new watch faces. But this is actually pretty low on my list and I'll tell you why. So the new watch faces are photos and time lapses. The photos are basically you set a photo to your watch face from your photo library and you can even set it so that it picks randomly from a certain album and every time you raise your wrist you, it changes to a different photo from that album. The time-lapse feature, on the other hand, gives you a selection of cities from around the world, uh, including New York and London and others, and um, it, when you raise your wrist, it plays a time-lapse um, of that city starting from the current time, which is pretty cool. Um, so my issue with these is that both of them are photo-based, and they take up the whole screen, and they make they make you very aware of where the edges of the screen are, and that, that bothers me. That kind of breaks the whole immersion of it. And the thing is, this is something that Apple has been doing a really good job so far of avoiding uh, with the Apple Watch. Um, a really good example of this is the app selection screen, where if you notice, 
um, the apps don't actually ever hit the edge of the screen. They just kind of get smaller and smaller and smaller until they fade away. And I love that. I love the fact that you don't really have any perception of where the edge is. It just kind of fades into the curvature of the edge of the watch. You, you can also now ask Siri to do some new things, including start a workout, um, get some transit information, uh, calculate a tip, or even check your glances for you. There's another new feature called nightstand mode, and I think this is kind of meant to be used at night when you're charging the watch. And it's kind of cool, you just set it on its side and it turns it into this mini nightstand alarm clock. And you can even use the digital crown as a snooze button and the side button as, a, as an off button. They also updated the friend system, so you can now add more friends and uh, you can even group them into categories so you can have your uh, co-workers, you can have your family, all, all, of, all separated into different groups. They've also integrated FaceTime audio, which is great for making free, high quality phone calls over Wi-Fi. You can also now do multicolor sketches, which to be honest is a feature I've, I've never really used much. So that's it guys. Um, overall, I think this is a really great update with a ton of good features. Biggest thing for me is the the fact that the apps now run natively, I think that is going to make it overall just such, just a much better experience. And I'm very excited for that. But I wanna hear what you think. Let me know in the comments below what kind of new features you'd like to see for the Apple Watch. And if you're new to this channel, definitely consider subscribing and I will keep you up to date with all sorts of fun stuff. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you next time.